Okay, wanted to do an out of class uh, discussion on disinfection since we're running out of time this semester and instead spend uh, the majority of the time uh, this last week uh, working on uh, a large example or homework problem that'll be due at the beginning of exam week. So we talked about disinfection, so the purpose is to kill harmful pathogens that would be in the water uh, that you would find and it could be related to uh, either primary disinfection and primary disinfection is to inactivate microorganisms or pathogens that you would have in the water and then secondary disinfection secondary disinfection is to treat it in the distribution system And so this might, uh, perhaps you have some regrowth that happens along the pipeline from the water treatment plant to your home. And so you put in the secondary disinfectant uh, to take care of that. So that you're guaranteed when you open up that tap at your house that you will not have any microorganisms, uh, Giardia, Cryptosporidium, and so on, that would be inside there. Historically, uh, chlorine chemistry has been related to Cl2, free chlorine. and free of chlorine Cl2 and so there's a table in your textbook that goes over the pros and cons of a lot of different disinfectants that are being found uh, in today's water treatment uh, systems table 1021 free chlorine so the chlorine chemistry are really that's related to the chlorine gas concentration and the relationship between the gas concentration and the aqueous concentration is related to the Henry's law or KH of that system and so that's the molar concentration of chlorine in the aqueous phase all that divided by the partial pressure of chlorine gas so that would be the partial pressure in solution really controls the concentration of chlorine that you would have in solution at any particular time and again that's related to the Henry's law or the KH of that uh, that system. So the chemistry is pretty simple and we looked at this a uh, little bit. Well, actually we looked at chloramines in class but uh, the chlorine chemistry is fairly simple. Chlorine the aqueous concentration plus water uh, yields HOCl that's hypochlorous acid. You got some free hydrogens that are in there and you have uh, chlorine and uh, this species right here, the hypochlorous acid, is a species that you want in that system. So this would be a fast reaction. Unfortunately, it does produce some hydronium ions. And so you have to make sure that the pH or the system is well buffered because you could drop that pH uh, pretty quick. So you have to make that sure there's some alkalinity that's inside uh, this water that you're treating or sufficient alkalinity and this hypochlorous acid is your goal that's what you're trying to trying to uh, trying to take uh, beautiful window 7 hypochlorous acid now unfortunately there's another reaction that can happen inside of here with the hypochlorous acid hypochlorous acid it can be in equilibrium and we'll go ahead and draw this here in equilibrium uh, hydrogen plus OCl minus so that hydrogen can dissociate in this system and you would form the hypochlorite ion and unfortunately this is a key one it's about 100 times less potent so the hypochlorite ion is 100 times less potent than the hypochlorous acid so depending on the pH of your system if you were to uh, if you were to get a bunch of hypochlorite ion to form in your system with the right chemistry uh, you might um, you're, you're not going to be as effective uh, at uh, disinfecting your system so the pKa of this system 
or the acid dissociation constant is about 4.73 uh, from the literature. And so what that means, if we just look at the Ka, the, so it's products over reactants, H plus plus uh, hypochlorite ions, HOCl minus all that divided by HOCl, the hypochlorous acid. And so this dissociation constant 7.3, what that means if we were to draw the concentration profiles in this system, uh, pH, and we have a negative log concentration of either hypochlorous acid or hypochlorite ion. And so if we draw the inflection point where this pKa is of 7.43, and so in a nutshell, we would get a graph that would look like this. This would be HOCl concentration, and then we would have something hypochlorous or hypochlorite ion concentration would be here. And so this would be going up in concentration. So it, at pHs that are less than or equal to 7.43, the majority of what you would form would be the hypochlorous acid. That's what you want. At more alkaline systems or alkaline waters, you've got to be real careful here. You're going to be forming this hypochlorite ion, and it's going to take a whole lot more free chlorine in order to uh, disinfect correctly. So fortunately, most uh, waters that we treat are fairly circumneutral pH, about 7 or so. And so, again, that would favor this hypochlorous acid in that system, which would be a very effective uh, chemistry. So I also talked about chloramines, and I did that in the last lecture, and, and uh, so that seems to be the future. That would be either combined uh, chlorine or reactions with ammonia chloramines. And this seems to be the future of a lot of disinfection, uh, ma mainly minimizing the amount of chlorine you would have in system system, and reduce the amount of uh, reactions with trihalomethanes that you might have or reactions with organics that you might have in your water. We went over that chemistry in uh, class pretty well uh, before. Um, so again, some reasons to disinfect. And so it's uh, HOCl is a very strong oxidant or hypochlorous acid. And so it's a very strong oxidant. It can, re can react with a lot of different things in the water. And so I'm just going to highlight a couple of uh, primary things that are important with disinfection. So you might get uh, H2S reduction to SO4. You might get uh, ferrous to ferric. Excuse me, this might actually oxidize, so not reduce, but oxidize these in solution. Uh, you've also got uh, reactions with natural organic matter, or NOM, that would be in the system. And this can form a lot of THMs or trihalomethanes, which are cancer causing agents. The dirtier the water you have, the more potential you have of forming these. And so it's essentially reactions with uh, hypochlorous acid, plus I'll just write THMs on here. And you can form a lot of bad things in the water. Uh, so CHCl3, uh, CH. BR2Cl, so bromoforms, dibromochloromethane, chloroforms, and uh, I think there's another common one, HCHBRCl2. And there's more discussion in your textbook on this trihalomethanes that are formed. And so they've been regulated by EPA since about 1979, cancer causing agents. And uh, you certainly want to have cleaner water before you disinfect with chlorine. That's uh, the take home message with that. Uh, number three here is uh, reactions with microbes take time. They take time. And historically, uh, you've had a chlorine contact chamber. That's been a common part of a water or wastewater treatment plant. 
where instead of water just passing through this basin from one end to the other, uh, somewhat short circuiting, uh, it actually goes through and it uh, eddies back and forth. You get mixing, but you also slow the contact time in that system. And the theta H or detention time of some chamber like this, a flowing contact chamber, might be 30 to 90 minutes. You might also bank on the uh, distribution system, perhaps your water treatment plant's a little bit away from the consumers, and you'll get some sufficient contact time that might be in that uh, system as well. Uh, number four here is the residual turbidity. Residual turbidity that you have in the water will or may shield the pathogens. And they may shield the pathogens in or from chlorine. And so if you have some dirty water, the chlorine might not see or react with those pathogens that you have there. And um, it's not going to be as effective. And so you must have really have clean water to disinfect. In drinking water treatment plants, in these plants, uh, you typically have a uh, common rule of thumb about 1.1 to 0.2 milligrams per liter Cl2 per liter. That would be milligrams of Cl2 per liter. Uh, would be a typical pre-chlorination. That might be to oxidize some things that you have in the water. And that might minimize maybe biofouling that might happen inside your, your process. And 1.5 to 2.0 milligrams per liter uh, would be uh, the residual or the dose uh, that you would put in towards the end of the plant. And that, after it reacts with some things that you have in the water, might result in about 1.0 milligrams per liter uh, free chlorine that would be inside that distribution system as it goes to consumers. So when you open up your tap, uh, before you run it through your Brita filter at your house, you would have about one milligram per liter of chlorine that would be in your water. And that, again, that's maintained to kill the regrowth in the distribution system that you might have uh, in that uh, system. Other disinfectants that you might see, and there's some discussions in our textbook, ozone. And so that's uh, taking 3O2 to yield uh, 2O3. And so that's a st very strong disinfectant. Unfortunately, it has no residual and it's quite expensive uh, to, to uh, create. And then, of course, UV uh, disinfectants. And so that reacts with the DNA and the nucleic acids uh, within the Giardia, Cryptosporidium, and other viruses that you might have in that system. Uh, it is also a very strong disinfectant, but there is no residual, again, in that... Uh, No residual in that system. That apparently is not a problem as you step out of the United States and look in Canada and the European Union. Uh, they're not as concerned with residuals in their particular systems. And uh, so they're quite commonly used as, uh, as disinfectants in, in uh, those, those countries.